By definition, the standards are coming together, developing a consensus. You need you know, very sophisticated systems, you need a global language of business, you need common standards, you need you know, unique identifiers. Sharing certain information, not all information, not competitive information, because it benefits everyone in the long run. Trace any object on the internet or around the world. And we have standards to help you do that. If the standards are common, and we're talking a common language. Now my part of the world, Middle East, Egypt, are now speaking the global language of business. It really requires an incredible amount of trust. It's a contract with the rest of the world saying, I will do this, I'm assuming you will do this. The world cannot afford waste. The consumers are not willing to pay for waste. We all have the same dream to create one global standard. Everybody, the companies, the communities, the consumer can benefit from them. Accuracy, integrity, uh, a trusted network, a safe supply chain, all of those words now become important to the new GS1 going into the future. Imagine a world without standards, where red didn't always mean stop, and green didn't always mean go, and railroads spaced their tracks at any width they felt like, and records didn't always spin at 33 and a third, and different buttons on different phones made different tones, and orchestras never got past tuning up because no one could agree on what key to play in. But standards do in fact exist, because we need them. It's how we make the music play, and get where we're going, and build, and design, and connect, and communicate. And so it was with this standard, the barcode. Like music, truly universal and ingenious. Born of necessity 40 years ago, and brought to life in a Marsh's supermarket in Troy, Ohio when some Wrigley's chewing gum was the first item ever scanned. Finally solving a problem that had been begging for a solution in grocery stores everywhere. So it's, it's like magic. By magic, you were reading an optical symbol. There was a database which was new, and you were automatically adding to the bill it's hard to imagine now, but 40 years ago, this was just sheer magic. It utterly transformed the way we do business. All of a sudden, machines could read product information. Back then, only food manufacturing and grocery businesses were thinking hard about the barcode. And only a small number of them were thinking ahead. There was once upon a time when we used to have to put a price marker on each one of these. This may be before you were born. <laughs> but anyway, and today... One of the forward-thinking companies, Wegmans, the family firm founded in 1916, now run by Danny Wegman. It took us three years to have scanning in all of our stores. It took the rest of the industry another 12. Processing starts the moment fresh berries or fruits arrive at one of the plants. The other side of the equation, food manufacturers. Companies like J.M. Smucker, which started as a family business making apple butter in 1897. Because with a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. The Smucker's brand always stood for old-fashioned, down-home goodness. But the business was run with an eye to the future. Tim Smucker was in charge of marketing in the 70s, and barcodes gave even him a few worries. The major concern was, do we have to put these black lines on here, defacing my label? 
Uh, well, sure, that was a, that's a very big concern. How can you do that, and, and what's the reason for doing that? Is it really worth it? Every manufacturer had to justify putting this barcode on the packaging. Every retailer had to justify building an infrastructure in the store uh, with check automated checkout, cash registers, etc. Businesses resisted change not only because of cost, but also because of an instinctive reluctance to share information. The difficulty comes from, uh, on one side, the competitive nature of our industry. Everyone wants to differentiate almost by nature. That's how you win in the marketplace. But eventually, with the barcode enabling a single, shared, common language, the decision not to use it made less and less sense. Just imagine if two barcodes couldn't be read by the same scanner, or if the barcode didn't refer to the same data. It would be chaos. And so for this to take off, everyone had to speak the same language right out of the gates. Otherwise, it was going to fall apart. So standards is everything here. And getting everyone to A, do it, and B, do it right, is, was a huge task. It wasn't just a barcode. Uh, it was a process to develop standards. Everything in the world that we can do that is not uh, a competitive advantage that provides a level play on, playing field is a standard. You've got to look at standards as a rising tide lifts all boats. It's not a zero-sum game. In other words, a good standard is better for all the competitors and it results in a type of behavior called cooperation. You cooperate so you can compete. When leaders of the largest retail companies weighed in, a tipping point was reached. By the early 1990s, the barcode standard was global. And what a difference it made. Tesco ship pretty much a billion individual items every single week from farms and factories all over the world to stores all over the world. Getting the stock levels just right is every retailer's dream. To do that, you need you know, very sophisticated systems, you need a global language of business, you need common standards. The reality is that standards are there to avoid waste, to remove unnecessary activities, unnecessary transactions, unnecessary inventory. When you look at the number of pieces we have to ship in a single day, you couldn't do that without the automation, the barcoding, you know, all the information that flows through the system. Barcodes, 15 years ago, game over. The one, the standard is worldwide. Billions, uh, something between five and 10 billion tags are scanned daily. This is one of the most successful standards uh, in, in history. Up until now, GS1 standards have really focused on the supply chain, and that's important to the efficiency of our stores. But going forward, we're using data to sell things to people, and that's a whole new ball of wax. The barcode speaks to the consumer because it gives them access to information. Oh, our customers are going to buy things from us without ever physically having handle the goods or even seeing them. It allows them to scan the barcode with their mobile phone and then access the kind of information they want. They're going to rely purely on the data that's presented on a screen or on a mobile phone to make a purchasing decision. So that data has to be right. When a consumer reads a product, the information that they are going to get, if they use our source of information, is going to be trusted information, authentic information. There is, I have to say also, a need for protecting reputations and brands from uh, malicious manipulation of information. So in all those areas, GS1 can help. If the standards are common, and we're talking a common language, then there's a better chance of things like counterfeit goods being picked up. Because authentic goods can be identified in advance because they come from a known source. They've got a pedigree. Pedigree is a simple concept of being able to trace the ownership of the product all the way through the value chain. 
Using pedigree to spot counterfeit medicines is just one way standards can help fix the healthcare industry. Premier, an alliance of more than 2,700 hospitals and health systems, has one of the biggest reservoirs of clinical data anywhere on the planet. At Premier, we started looking at other industries and saying, what are they doing that makes that ability for them to check out at the counter so efficient? 40 years ago, food was almost 20% of our gross national product. Healthcare was below 10. Today, it's reverse. When Danny Wegman says that, that that is applicable to health care, I can assure you that he knows because he's made that happen in his organization. There's an enormous opportunity ahead of us. It's fraught with all the same problems that the barcode had in terms of adoption. Each hospital may have a different database so that when they want to share that information about what the patient has consumed with another hospital, it may not be the same. You can't have shared electronic information if you don't have standards. You have people staking out their own turf, saying if you play in this playpen, everybody communicates. And some of the companies that are big in that are going to build big walls around it. So the challenge we face as a country and as a world is how to break down those walls. Healthcare, manufacturing, retail, all rely on a financial system that undertakes transactions worth over $3 trillion each day. And yet, the financial industry itself has sometimes lacked that pedigree that is so critical to other sectors. So in 2008, when uh, the financial system suffered its historic meltdown, we were trying to disentangle all these contracts and deals, literally one by one looking at each object and look, tracing it to figure out how it ended up in another bank. But just imagine if every one of these instruments, uh, every one of these financial contracts had a unique number. And you could say, ah, that's the one that Lehman Brothers sold you. And that was the universal question that every uh, CFO had to answer in, in 2008. Um, what exposure do we have to Lehman? And the scary part about that question is many CFOs confided us and said they didn't know. I think it's interesting to contemplate that you have a transaction that's worth two dollars or four dollars and it can be tracked throughout the world but you can't track something that's a million dollars. So fast forward to 2013 now um, the financial industry is, is working very hard globally to try to I identify a common way to identify legal entities one way around the world. It's a long way from what anyone could have imagined when scanners first appeared in supermarkets. And it's about to go even further. Technology is being developed at MIT and auto ID labs around the world to enable a vision they call the Internet of Things. So for the first time, the information world and the physical world can be coupled at a level that we could not even have imagined a few years ago. We could actually uh, engage in this wireless technology. We could almost re-engineer, reinvent all, all the ways we do work today. And the examples of that could be something as profound as identifying the, uh, whether a product is a counterfeit or real. It could be something as mundane as counting the number of items in a shelf in a retail store, or something as profound as figuring out which batch of wheat that product came from. It is going to be the bloodstream the information bloodstream of the physical world. Remarkable as that technology is, technology alone has never made the critical breakthroughs in this story. The lasting value has always come from business rivals sitting down together to create and implement shared standards. 
So uh, these are big things that are going to have to get tackled in, in the next you know, five or ten years. We can already see some proprietary standards emerging, um, but pr proprietary standards never last. You know, the, the, the lasting standards are the ones that everybody agrees upon. When I look at the future, uh, my dream is that we have extended our global standard to any sector. Everybody, the companies, the communities, the consumer can benefit from them. Three things got us to where we are over the last 40 years. Leadership, community, and standards, which is a form of agreement. And these are actually very hard things to achieve. Leadership, because you need to have people agree to do something. Community, because you need the community to do the heavy lifting and then spread the word an agreement, which is standards, so that everyone then talks the same language. We can't do our job without extraordinary leadership from industry, and we're eternally indebted to um, people over the last 40 years that have um, graciously, selflessly offered their time and effort to promote something that didn't directly accrue to them, but that helped to um, improve the overall industry. It's how you build consensus. Um, by definition, standards are coming together developing a consensus. We need to know what is important to agree upon. And if we find those things that are important to agree upon, the things that we disagree upon will fall away. It's a vision Joseph Woodland could never have imagined in 1948, sitting on a Florida beach where he first dreamt up the idea for the barcode. I poked my four fingers into the sand, and for whatever reason, I pulled my hand toward me and drew four lines. I said, golly, now I have four lines, and they could be wide lines and narrow lines instead of dots and dashes. It sounds, as he himself once said, like a fairy tale. It's no fairy tale. It's just the beginning of a story that is still being written.